Hello, I want to start this video by saying that all landlords are bastards, regardless of which political party they're in. We received an email not long ago, uh, and I'm going to read you the email. It says, Hi, my name is Redacted, and I lived in a property in North Melbourne a few years ago that was filled with mould. We complained about it for almost a year and it was not taken seriously. The landlord borrowed a dehumidifier from someone on Facebook and then took it away a month later despite mould issues. We were told to keep the windows open and when we said it was too cold, it was winter, we were told to use the heater. When the roof caved in and after a week of twice daily emails to the real estate agent, they finally got someone in to inspect the property. The next day we were evicted with 24 hours notice. We had to throw out almost all our furniture due to the mold infestation and we were so sick all the time. Anyway, whilst writing our VCAT application, we discovered that our landlord is running for Lord Mayor of Melbourne for the Greens. She's claiming to be for renters, but this is 100% not the truth. I wanna thank this person for speaking up, and I'm gonna show you some of the photos that were sent in. This is a pair of their shoes, which is obviously heavily infested with mold. Here's some evidence of mold kind of leaking into the wall due to probably a poorly installed air conditioner. Here's also just a moldy wall, and here's some more evidence of the mold infestation. Obviously before posting this video or doing any posts about this, we looked for some more information. And I guess here it is. So here we have the eviction notice that was sent by the Greens candidate for Lord Mayor of Melbourne. Uh, it's a section 91 ZL eviction, which you can just give, I guess, whenever you want. If the place is bad enough, you don't have to offer a renter any compensation for renting a property that doesn't meet the minimum rental standards, um, or that is literally just about to fall over. Um, you can just kick out a renter at any time, and that's inherently unfair. People should be provided compensation if their landlord isn't able to provide them, you know, something that they're paying for. You can see here that the notice was sent on the 17th of January 2023, and the termination date is the next day, the 18th of January 2023. That's just unfair. Also, the tenants asked for a copy of the mould report that was done. The landlord refused to provide the mould report because they were waiting on legal advice. That's pretty suspicious. The landlord also then tried to claim some of the bond after the tenants left for this property that was unsafe for habitation. That is just ridiculous. We know that the landlord did provide a dehumidifier for a short period of time, but what we didn't know is that they literally asked the North Melbourne Good Karma Network on Facebook if she could borrow a dehumidifier for a week or two. This landlord was unwilling to even pay for a dehumidifier. That's ridiculous. I want to read you an excerpt of the blurb about this uh, Lord Mayor candidate uh, because it reads a little funny after knowing all that stuff that's just happened. It says, The Greens Lord Mayor candidate, Roxanne Ingleton, is a renter in North Melbourne and a midwife in the public hospital system and an experienced union representative supporting healthcare workers with their rights at work. She has lived in Melbourne for over 20 years. Roxanne has long fought for workers' rights and knows firsthand the struggles that essential workers like nurses are facing to find affordable housing near their place of work. I think that's pretty on the nose considering not long ago, this person was not only a landlord, but a little bit of a slumlord. This person who's running as a renter and claims to know, you know, and be on the side of renters, uh, was renting out a property that was by their own admission unsafe. I do want to say that this property has since been sold. It was sold in June 2023, so June last year for half a million bucks. Um, so it may well be, and it probably is in fact, I don't know why I said may well be, uh, it's probably true that this person is no longer a landlord. And the fact that they're running as a renter at the moment is probably accurate but it's a little bit misleading considering they were very recently a landlord. Now I want to say that it's not particularly significant that this person is a Greens candidate or a candidate for any other political party because all landlords are enabling and participating in a system that oppresses a group of people, renters in Australia. They take the product of your labour in the form of rent and use it to pay for investment properties and increase their own wealth. And that is inherently exploitative, um, regardless of whether or not that landlord is a slumlord uh, and is exploiting you by making you live in an unsafe premises, or is just, you know, a regular landlord who is actually renting a safe premises, um, but is exploiting your labor for their personal profit. I don't think we should have any politicians who are landlords because it is one, a conflict of interest. If they're voting on anything that has to do with investment properties or like 
I don't know, Airbnb or whatever, and they're doing those things and they have investment properties, they're going to vote for things that benefit them as landlords. That is a conflict of interest. You shouldn't be able to vote on things that directly benefit your bottom dollar. Our current system allows you to do that and I think that is inherently wrong. And as we can see, all politicians are doing this, regardless of whether they're in the Labor Party, the Liberal Party, the National Party or the Greens. I know the Greens are campaigning very well on a renter's rights ticket and I think things like this kind of diminish the arguments that they're making but they're still pretty good arguments regardless. So I don't think it's fair to kind of paint all of the Greens with this slumlord brush, but it is fair to paint a lot of them with a landlord brush because that is true. Although, also that being said, far less than the other parties, but it is what it is. You're gonna have landlords in the parties, they're benefiting from a housing crisis and a rental crisis, and that is wrong. As far as I'm aware, there is only one party that doesn't allow landlords as candidates, and that is Victorian Socialists. And that's kind of disappointing because I think it's a really good policy, and I think everyone should have that policy. Anyways, before I go, I want to say thank you very much to this person who sent this in. Um, it's really important that these stories be told. And I want to ask anyone who is renting from a landlord, regardless of whether it is a good property or a bad property, please reach out to either Victorian Socialists or myself at purplepingerstm at gmail.com. Um, because, yeah, let's talk shit about your landlord. This is unfair. I don't really care which party they're from, as you can probably tell. You know what? If you've got a landlord who's a member of Victorian Socialists, let me know. Let's talk shit about that landlord. And again, again, before I go, thank you so much to everyone who has supported me doing these videos um, by joining the Patreon and buying merch. I really wouldn't be able to do any of this without you, so thank you so much. And yeah, love you all. Thanks for listening.